Hey Moral Gamers, welcome back. Today I want to discuss a topic that I've seen online a few times and it's about classic gamers, retro gaming. Who's a retro gamer? Who's a classic gamer? Well, the fact of the matter is, is a lot of people have a lot of different thoughts on that so uh, that's what we're going to discuss today. And yeah, I feel free to leave your comments below. Uh, I want to hear what you have to say. I do read the comments, believe it or not. Uh, so, by the way, if you haven't recognized, we are playing DuckTales! Woo! Do, 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 da, da, da. Okay, Henry. Uh, yeah, we're playing DuckTales, the remix, the new version. And, uh, yep. Yeah. Anybody remember these? This is Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. I don't actually have DuckTales, but essentially the, the original game came on one of these NES cartridges. And so, to be able to find it these days is a pain. But hey. It was fun back in the day, and it's fun now, so if you don't enjoy the conversation, at least enjoy the game. That being said, let's go forward. So, I've heard a lot of people saying different things about what does and doesn't necessarily make a retro gamer a classic gamer. I've heard them put down phrases like, uh, statements like, oh, you have to be born in the 80s or earlier. So, hey, you're born 1990? You're not a retro gamer. You're not, not admissible. Uh, they'd say stuff like, um, oh, you had to have grown up with the Super Nintendo, or Genesis, or Nintendo, things like that. And it's like, really, guys? Really? Or, you have to be in your 30s. Alright, so, let's, 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 let's look at this first. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am in my 30s. I also grew up on an Atari 5200. 5200, I, had, I was three years old playing a 5200, pwning my family on pretty much all the games we had. That just happened to be a little bit better. We were a competitive family and whatever. So, yeah, it was sweet though. Uh, by the way, does anyone remember that 5200? Yeah, I thought so. So I went from a 5200 to a 2600, I know it's backwards, uh, to a 7800, wrote my first programs on a Commodore 64. Uh, I finally ended up getting a Nintendo, traded that out for a Game Boy, traded that out for a Game Gear, went down the Sega line for a little bit, so I had a Genesis. Actually, my first system was a Sega Nomad. Nomad was sweet. Portable Genesis, dude. Awesome. It was Sega Nomad, and then I jumped to the, um, I jumped to the, the CDX, which was Sega CD and Genesis on one little portable Sony Walkman type thing. Pretty slick. Then I finally got a full-fledged Genesis. Uh, a full-fledged Sega CD2, uh, 32X, I had the whole 1580 chords coming out of the back type thing going, you know, kind of complex. Jumped over to Saturn, loved it, more than the PlayStation, still do to this day. Um, Saturn, Dreamcast, and I kind of went from there. Uh, Dreamcast was sadly less, I guess, system. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I was hoping they'd do more. Any rate, though, so yeah, I've, I've been around, I've done a lot of gaming in my time, and... It always comes back to me, um, I like playing what's now, but if I'm ever to go backwards, I always find myself resting in that uh, Super Nintendo Genesis era, because that really was, in, in my opinion, that was the golden age of gaming. At that point, it was do or die. If you were not creative, if your game was not better than everyone else's, you didn't have that fallback on like, oh, the fanboys and everything, like Call of Duty games have. You basically did or you were sunk. That's why Final Fantasy was the Final Fantasy. They basically, if Square didn't make it at that point, they were out of business. So it was their final game, saying, okay, this is either gonna work or fail. And that's the way gaming was back then. You differentiated yourself or you're gone. That's what I like about modern day, um, modern day indie titles. You have to differentiate yourself or you're gone. But I'm gonna digress here. So, retro gaming, retro game is basically any game, take retro, actually, any game that's from a past generation, um, two or three generations back, is technically retro. So, we could be calling PlayStation 1 games retro. But with gamers, they want to put a label on it, put a definition, so mostly it's Super Nintendo Genesis and before. Um, those are great games. Those are awesome games. And I would say anyone who absolutely enjoys that that area of gaming, they deserve to be called a retro gamer. I mean, if you're still playing Super Metroid, as God intended it, on a Super Nintendo, 
Probably had your backup battery replaced a couple times, but we understand. You are a retro gamer, my friend. You're a retro gamer if you own at least one old school system that you are playing. And I don't care if it's a remake or not, because you're still playing the old school games. Now, if you're an emulation type person, um, no, no, no. You're not a retro gamer, you're technically just a pirate. Sorry guys, but there's legalities against it. Um, personally, I disagree with the laws against emulation. I think if a game is over 10 years old, who cares? You really want to do something? You really want to do something to reinvent your new game and bring it to a modern audience? Hello guys, are you looking here? Capcom's already done it. <sighs> oh, and then uh, Sega keeps throwing out all their junk onto various networks. They're saying, oh, here's original Altered Beast, original Streets of Rage, original this, original that. Hey, play these games, guys. Play these. Uh, they're fun, but you're not putting out all of your best, guys. That's what the Genesis Ultimate Collection was. It was a bunch of retro games on a $20 Blu-ray. Or DVD if you have Xbox, and you got some of Sega's best in one package. That was nice. So, yeah, I would totally consider a person retro if they're one who actually enjoys those older titles, actually enjoys going back to that, playing it. Uh, granted, there are so many games out there you could spend, you could spend 60 lifetimes and not hit every game out there. Um, but still, a person who goes back and enjoys the classics, enjoys games from the older eras, definitely deserves to be a retro gamer. And if they can tell you about them, formulating a great opinion, that type of person is a connoisseur of retro game, in my opinion. Again, you know, if you can actually tell us why you liked, oh, Legend of Zelda over um, Adventures of Link. Zelda 2 Adventures of Link. Why did you like it? What are the dynamics between the two games? What made one better than the other? That is definitely something that puts you in my book as being a better retro gamer. Why did you like Fire Emblem versus Shining Force? Why did you like... And, and I could keep going on making all sorts of comparisons. What made... Game A better than Game B when both games were in about the same time frame. So yeah, that that in my opinion that and I I think it should be your opinion as well. That I believe is a is a retro gamer is a person who can not only talk speak competently on older games but also enjoys playing them. Is also willing to go back and play them. The older systems have a lot that we can still learn from. They have a lot of games that still stack up today. They have a lot of games that are just horrible today. But they have a lot of great games that we can play today and still have a lot of fun with. No, they don't have multiplayer, online, uh, massive, whatever, subscriptions, trophies, yada yada. They don't have all that stuff. But there's something simple and fun about them. Tetris and Pac-Man are two great examples because they are games that have been retro and they've been redone so many times and people still play them. People still play Tetris, Pac-Man, um, sometimes Centipede I actually catch once in a while. People still play those old games. Asteroids, Breakout. Find me a cell phone that doesn't have access to a download of Breakout. People still play these things. And that's that's why retro gaming is something that will never really die. And a retro gamer is a person who can go back and absolutely enjoy that era of gaming. So I want to hear your thoughts. You know, please rate this video even if you hate it. Uh, subscribe to the channel and definitely comment below definitely comment I want to hear your thoughts on what you believe a retro gamer is whether you agree or disagree
cast these inferior mirror and beam spells. It's the last time I shop for spell ingredients at this discount store. You haven't seen lots of magic of the spell. You may have coin of lost realm, but your number one dime will soon be mine. 